All right, guys, we're back with another video. Um, today, we're going to be discussing a couple of the dives and a couple of the trips we've been on in the past month or so. And we're really just going to be breaking down our dives and giving you guys a couple tips and tricks on what we do and how we do it. All right, so this grouper, you can see, pretty much just will not let me get close to him. Been following him for a couple hundred yards at this point. Our strategies when the grouper decide to do this is they're typically looking for a hole. So you can see this grouper didn't exactly do that. After all that, he kind of just went and sat in the sand. Um, but I decided to take that shot as fast as I could. As soon as I got close enough so I can get a shaft in him, make sure that he's not going anywhere. I think this dive's Justin. You can see me coming up here. No, oh, that's actually Tyler. Yeah. This time of year, there's just so many mangroves on the reef. You can see if you just get to the bottom, grunt a little, maybe throw up a little sand. And they, they all just come right up to you. Yeah, they will just swarm you. So. And you can see I'm having a little bit of target panic right here. I mean, there's just so many fish around me. I'm having a hard time picking out, you know, the nicest fish of the school. Right, and even then, if they get between you and the end of your gun from you, you can't really shoot them. So you got to pick that one that's actually a little bit on the outskirts. Typically, the bigger ones will just sit a little bit away, away from the main school. You can see here, just finally see one we want to go for. And stoned them. Yep, stoned that one. Pretty good fish. Nice stone shot. You can see there's just tons of mangroves on the reef. This is another grouper Justin's on. So I was going down on this fish after chasing him for a little bit. I got he almost gives me a shot right here. I shoot. Yeah. And I, I guess I just torqued my wrist a little bit and missed high. Yep, just went right over him. You can see the groupers hanging out around that, that nice school of glass. But I followed this fish to like a small little ledge here on the edge of the reef. And uh, his head and eyes were behind a fern, so he couldn't see me. I dove right down on top of him and shot him right through the fern. Yeah. These smaller fish, especially, they don't have a ton of experience seeing divers, so they'll put their head behind something, but their body not, and you can get them pretty easily. We were getting a bunch of nice fish, nothing huge, good size, I think around the 26 inch range. Good eating fish, nice and sustainable. I think this dive is me going down. You can just see the mangroves. Just want to go down nice and slow. Kind of pick a rock to hang on to, and then grunt a little and throw up some sand like we talked about, and let the fish come to you. And that's how you can get the bigger mangroves to end up coming your way. Yeah, you can see right here. Nice one comes in, stones him too. Nice shot. You use your left hand to pull yourself along the bottom. You really don't want to use your fins because that creates a lot of commotion, and you don't. You really don't want to act like you're posing a threat to these fish. Yeah, too much motion. Sometimes the grouper, if you just glide in on them, don't kick much at all. Just glide right in, let your weight belt take you to the bottom. You can get a real easy shot on some of these fish, especially the younger ones that aren't super huge and been shot at before. This was a pretty nice fish, one of the nicer ones of the day, and we didn't really put up too much of a fight there. But another nice, nice stone shot. I typically try and dive down on the back side of the school, typically where there's a little depression in the reef, where there's a little bit of sand and some rocks that I could get my hands on, maybe throw up a little sand, maybe scratch the rocks a little bit. But I always really want to tuck my knees down behind something and you know do my best to hide my body. And you can see my gun's just laying there right on the rocks. It's not doing any movement because it doesn't need to. Yeah, the only thing you're really moving is your head, looking around, making sure there's no fish coming in from behind. Pick out a nice Pick out one. Pick a target fish. Take a shot. Yeah, that shaft went clean through them. That's a nice one. In the box. Yeah. These two trips, we did one on the Hughes and then one on the Contender. When the weather's good enough, we really like to go out on the smaller boat. Save us a lot on gas. So this dive here, we were experimenting a little bit, throwing the, the Wahoo flashers, actually. And you can see the school just kind of completely swarms around it. There's still, I'm almost on the bottom and they're checking it out still. But I went and glided right on down and grunted a little. 
and they just came swarmed around me. I had seen this one really nice mangrove. That's him there. But I was waiting to see if anything bigger would come in. I still had plenty of bottom time. Just looking around, taking my time. I mean, the longer you're down there, the less of a threat you seem. You haven't shot them yet, so they're not that worried. But the trick is to show the least amount of interest in the fish, and you could always see as soon as you point your gun at them, you pose a threat. They, yeah, they, they kind of back freak away a out a little bit. bit, but still in that one too. This is a pretty good mangrove. This is Justin's view, bringing up that mangrove. You can see I hit him a little high, but still got the stone shot. So I think this is yep. Yeah, this is me. I think this is that that small grouper. Yeah. Oh yeah. So typically, when you find your bigger schools of fish, is typically going to be a black somewhere on the bottom, hanging out at the back of that school. And there so happened to be one. Chased him over to this rock. Decided he was a little short. He needs another year. Yeah. You can see he's just kind of sitting there, and once he decides he doesn't want to shoot this black, they really just start scanning, looking for some other mangroves. Takes a double, double check, make sure. Decides again, yeah, he's on the small side. See a nice mangrove. Yeah, do a little grunting. See if anything else will come in while you're on the bottom. <laughs> Got a nice hiding spot. Um, and after a little bit of grunting, this fish came pretty much just right in. Didn't quite get the stone shot here, but... He's in the box. Definitely a holding shot. Grouper gets to live to see another day. Yeah, you can see we can really get out there and do some nice diving on the, the little boat. Save some money on gas when it's nice and calm like this. Pretty good platform to do it. Real easy to get in on the boat. So this fish, Justin hits him and he tears off there. It was a little bit of a far shot. The far shot, but this is definitely one of the better fish of the day. Yeah, and I'm I'm nearby. I hear him. Comes up, Derek. Yeah, I see the fish hand still. I hand him my gun so he can take him because it's a nice fish, and I wanted to get the footage of him shooting it anyways. Kind of just glides down nice and slow. Just slow kick, not super threatening. Not swimming super fast. Takes the time lining up the shot. I'm surprised this fish was so calm, cool, and collected after already been shot. But no, he was he was hurting pretty bad. Yeah, well, <laughs> the second one definitely hurt him pretty bad. Oh yeah. But good fish, actually in some really shallow water here. This dive's funny. So this was a dive. We were diving some new territory down in the Keys and jumped in on this spot and as soon as the bubbles cleared from me entering the water I see this black grouper go up in the rocks and I immediately yell for a light I yeah, drop my gun to the look bottom. Look at this hole. You would never expect to see a grouper in that thing. Like, yeah. it is, it's just a tiny little hole. If I hadn't caught a glimpse of his tail going in that hole, I would have never guessed. And when you're in those areas where there's grouper around, but there's not much structure to hold them, they will be in any little thing. Right after he shot, and the, the shaft didn't move at all, I was like, man, he must have missed or stoned him, but pulled a little bit and started kicking. I think this is one of the nicer fish that day, right? Yeah. Right in that 10 to 15 pound range. Yeah, this was another another dive on some mangroves. You can see not many around right now. Grunt a little. I, well, I had thrown my <laughs> Wahoo Flasher about like 20 feet ahead of me before I dove. So I kind of wanted to crawl up just a little bit, see if like, anything came into that flasher. But find a good rock to hang on to and grunt a little, and you can just see they start rolling in. Start swarming me. <laughs> really like those Wahoo flashers for things like this because there's no chum in the water. Don't have to really worry about sharks coming in because of it. And it really just another way to keep the fish interested and keep them around. A lot of the times, these mangroves, as soon as you shoot one or two, they are out of there. But we were able to pick off quite a few here. Again, they're just 
too close. Not letting you pick one out to shoot until right there. Finally gives him that good broadside shot. You rolled him. Yep. Nice stone shot. Nice shot. Uh, this one's funny. So this this mutton, I had like had a shot at him. Pulled the trigger before and the the safety was on. So I, I dive on him again and he's like real marginal, just, just big enough. We don't really see too many. But look at this. Look at the shaft. I would have missed, but it bent into him. How crazy is that? His shaft probably has a slight defect in it from. Yeah, I've noticed from some of something. the slow mo shots that it'll curve to the right. I, this one shaft I'm using right now, we had actually found on the bottom. So, it's not the most straight, but you can see we, we, get our, we hit our shots most of the time. <laughs> Fate was not with that mutton. Yeah, that one just curved right into him. They were giving me hell, thinking it was small, so. Measuring them up. Yeah, it was 19. They only got to be 18. Oh, yeah. In the box. But, yeah. Nice fish. Definitely good eating. Going down, just checking it out, looking around. See a mangrove, really on the small side, kind of line up on them. I think you change your mind here. I was more or less just practicing my aim. <laughs> I tuck down behind this fan right here, do a little grunting. Yeah, when you get a hiding spot and like this, you could this. see him come right in on a, right on a string. <clears throat> Yeah, when you get a nice little hiding spot like that, they'll come right in because they just they can't see you. They're very curious fish. Yeah, so a little grunt and they can't see what it's coming from. They will, they will check you out. But I think that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something. Um, we're gonna be at it again, trying to make a couple more videos. You know, we got hunting season right around the corner, and we got some nice hunts planned. Trip to Maine. Should be should be a pretty good season, so if you want, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, and check us out. Let us know if you got any suggestions for other videos, but thanks for watching. I'm craving some whole fried snapper. He's a good one to fry whole, too.